Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to announce today that uh, we're having this in spite of the COVID virus. We are still going to honor our veterans, and I'm happy that all of you came. Uh, we have a few added extra um, presentations that we don't normally do, and uh, I'll announce them as it comes up. Um, so don't run away. It's not over when it's over, till it's over. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll start off today by uh, the chaplain offering a prayer. So I'll please uncover. O oh God of hosts, we bow our heads in thankfulness for the victories thou hast granted us. To us and to all those people who have united with us to stamp out the evils of aggression, intolerance, and greed. We beseech thee oh, to bring the blessings of understanding to the families and friends in this and other lands of those who have given their lives that men may be free. Grant, O oh God, that those closest to the fallen may mingle the pain of their losses with the ennobling light of sacrifice for civilization, sacrifice for a better world, for this and other generations yet unborn. Grant us too, O oh God, the courage to so live with the family of nations around the world that the end of strife will be the beginning of enduring peace. Grant us patience in planning with our fellow men and women, a world in which nations may resolve their differences by peaceful means. Touch thou the souls of people in every land with the enduring light of wisdom, so they may form a brotherhood which will strive to further the arts of peace under laws and ethics blessed by thy love. Grant us now thy continued blessings upon unity and strength that makes victories possible in war, that we may win greater victories of peace. Amen. Cover. Our Girl Scouts are going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And salute of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, at this time, I would like to uh, ask my second vice commander, Paul Amatucci, to give you a short briefing on why we're here today. Thank you, Commander. Thank you all for coming today. We are not here today to honor ourselves and our service. No, we are not here for us. We are here for everyone who wore the uniform, everyone who took the oath, everyone who left home behind, everyone who shared the honor to serve this nation, everyone who bore arms, was in harm's way, loaded ships, repaired engines, search and rescue, refueled aircrafts, dressed wounds, loaded trucks, armed weapon systems, launched missiles, cooked meals, stood guard, and more. Everyone who stood at attention for the flag, everyone who loves this nation, everyone who refuses to let a brother or sir fall, everyone who feels humble in the face of greater deeds and greater sacrifice, everyone who stood at attention and present arms at the national anthem with that special feeling in their hearts, 
No, we are not here today for us. We are here today for them. Thank you, Paul. I guess that's my turn <laughs> to announce our auxiliary president, Diana LaPierre, has a word for us. <clears throat> the uh, waging of wars involves more than just the combatants who fight to the death on the battlefield. The fighting forces begin at the fireside and in the hometowns. The repercussions of wars treat of uh, war's terrible brutality have chilled the heart and dimmed the hopes and dreams of many a loved ones left behind on the home front. While the horrors of the battlefield may not have been our experience, we have lived with terrifying loneliness created to answer an aggressive challenge. In a waging war, we have moved forward with the unity of purpose, which made us strong, forgetting um, pettiness, egotism, and pride. Our hearts beat in time with, uh, in tune with those in other nations fighting for freedom and dignity and opportunity of mankind. In our constant quest for our honorable world peace, there is need for unity of purpose if we truly are to move toward a brighter tomorrow. Thank you, Diana. Okay, you get to hear our second vice again. All Amatucci. <laughs> you ran away too quick. Courage is one of the virtues born of war. The courage of individuals in the face of danger and the courage of nations to protect the weak and punish the aggressor. There is bravery to be shown in peace as well. May we recapture the courage which turns the wilderness into cities that bound men together under government. We can turn slums into comfortable homes, turn uncertainty into certainty. We can reach new heights of civilization and opportunity for the men and women of this nation if we have the courage to expect and work for a better way of life. There can be romance in this challenge. The bravery that fights for political, social, economic, and spiritual gains may be more difficult to practice, may be unsung when achieved, but it is all the more, more worth striving for. Our uh, adjutant is not able to be present with us today, but Command Sergeant Major Tony Sincato will fill in for him. If there be glory in war, it is the almost incredible spirit which it engenders. Those who offer their lives sacrifice their all with magnificent abandon. Heroism becomes contagious, yet true in warfare, greed, and brutality are epidemic. Too often are these leaders which persist in the peace that follows. Let us strive to see the same spirit of self-sacrifice is cultivated in peace has been exhibited in war. It behooves us to rear new standards of success, to inspire youth in peace as youth was inspired in war. Public honor must be given where public honor is due, not to the manipulator of the market, the seeker after profit, power, or position, but rather let us honor the heroes of science who alleviate human suffering and carry to greater heights the standards of
Let us honor those who in public service seek not how much they may secure from the nation, but how much they can give. Let us honor those who devote their lives to that education which will lead our children on to live and laugh and learn and love as we have only dreamed of doing. Let us honor those veterans who carry into ordinary affairs of a life of noble idealism and severe capacity for self-devotion. Let us translate the devotion of war into a devotion of peace. Let us will to live as well as to die for our country. Uh, for our next uh, speech will be from our first vice, Ryan. <laughs> That's all right, Ryan English. I'm a little confused. I actually skipped a line. Sorry. <laughs> War has taught us the lesson of obedience to command. The game is more than the player, and the ship is more than the crew. There is a greater discipline we must now pursue if we are to preserve this virtue of obedience in our quest for an honorable world peace. That is obedience to the laws we ourselves make. The voluntary discipline of citizenship. Under our system of government, we may change the laws by majority rule. We may persuade our neighbors to new theories or new courses. We may advocate in free elections the choice of veterans or plans. As good citizens, we follow the choice of the majority, whether that choice is the individual's or not. This is the virtue of discipline, which must be ours in peace. This is the lesson we must learn at home in school, on the playing fields, in organizations, in the community, and the nation. It is the lesson of voluntary obedience to the decisions of the majority. We must not be unmindful either of the conclusions of other peoples with whom we have joined in the quest for an honorable world peace. This is the higher order of discipline. Next uh, speaker will be Command uh, Colonel <laughs> Roseanne Martin. I'm a mess today, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, the hurts of war fall alike upon those who wear the same uniform, no matter how they may differ in race, creed, or culture. Those who fight together, suffer together, to achieve a common aim. In the similarity of battle dress, there is a common denominator, the common purpose, the sharing of danger and suffering, which brings in time of war a tolerance which adds strength to the cause. As we put aside the brown and blue and green fabrics that made us one people on the battlefields, we can hold in our minds that tolerance that we have achieved. In tolerance, there is progress, progress toward a better and a happier world. Thank you, Carl. Okay, our guest speaker today is not only, but our first vice commander, Brian English. <laughs> Good morning. And Thank you everyone for coming today. We have, as was stated earlier, a little bit more to our normal ceremonies today. We are very fortunate today, and it is my distinct pleasure to introduce a young man from the town of Berwick, senior at Noble High School, who has just received his Eagle Scout Award. His name is Jarrett Richard, and today he is making a presentation for of his Eagle Scout project. Jarrett, please come. Hello, my name is Jarrett Richard from Troop 313 here in Berwick. 
Uh, my project was to create a memorial stone setting where I put a granite stone in with a plaque with flowers around it and a light for a Burwick resident and a Civil War Congressional Medal of recipient who served during the Civil War and was a sergeant in Company F, 38th Massachusetts Inf Volunteer Infantry. He was awarded the medal for his bravery at Opaquan Creek, Virginia on September 19, 1864. When he carried his flag to the most advanced position, where left almost alone, close to the enemy lines, he refused their demand to surrender, withdrew at great per personal peril, and saved his flag. His medal was awarded to him on May 10th, 1894, almost 30 years later. And I would like to thank um, the troop and all the scouts who helped me with this project and the beneficiary, the Legion, um, for help funding me and allowing me to do this project and also the town because it is town property. So now the boys will uncover it and you can all see it. Thank you, Jared. Thank you for what you've done for the community and recognizing our veterans. As is a custom of the American Legion at the dedication of any memorial, that an invocation be spoken for the presentation of that memorial. On this, I will call for our chaplain of American Legion Post 79, in Berwick, our chaplain, Paul LaPierre. And cover. Lord of hosts, be with us yet, so that we do not forget the noble efforts of the past in war and peace, to, pre to preserve democracy and maintain order and sustain humanity in ways of peace and social justice. We honor the men and women who have, with courage, sacrificed themselves on all the battlefields of life with compassion and concern for their fellow man. May our memorial to our fallen comrade be a living memorial of continuing efforts in the causes for which they died. Go with us as we part and enable us by your gracious help to maintain in word and deed the principles to which we have pledged ourselves as legionnaires. May yours be the glory and your children around the world be the Grateful beneficiaries. Amen. At this time, I'd like to introduce our honor guard from Berwick Post 79th, Charles S. Hatch Post. It is commanded by Forrest, Forrest, Davis. Forrest Davis. I was a brainchild of our post commander, Dennis Willett. At this time, Honor Guard will fire a salute. this time, Tom Martineau, Marine Corps, Vietnam veteran and Double Purple Heart recipient, will play honors to the branch of services and amazing grace.
Thank you, Paul. That's beautiful. Today, we gather to honor the truest of American heroes. Not athletes, celebrities, nor politicians. Neither relegated to Republicans nor Democrats. Black nor white. Affluent nor poor. Male nor female. These patriots have one commonality that binds them together in a bond that transcends these classifications. Is, it is that at some point in their lives, they laid down the pursuit of happiness in their own interest to serve the greater good of their nation, risking all in an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. These are our American veterans. Throughout our history, in wars small and great, America's veterans have served with honor, defending the values that have made America. In times of peace, our veterans have stood watch, ensuring that our people and institutions remain safe from those who would threaten us. America today finds itself in great tumult. We are faced with an unprecedented health crisis and divisions among us not seen since the Civil War. These divisions, if not mitigated, threaten the very core of our way of life. American greatness was not only achieved on battlefields with external enemies, but also in the heart of America, her people. It is in acts of kindness and generosity and support for our communities and families that America's character is manifest. American magnanimity is shown in the way we treated our defeated enemies after World War II. We did not enslave them, as other totalitarian regimes did, but we rebuilt them through the Marshall Plan and other aid. Our defense of Western Europe and Japan from Soviet aggression ensured that democracy and prosperity returned to these nations. Our veterans proudly served in these efforts. As we should, we honor these veterans today, 
A debt of gratitude is owed by every American, regardless of their political inclination, to these men and women who serve. Veterans serve to protect the rights granted by our Constitution and Bill of Rights that many take for granted. There would be no freedom of assembly or right to expression if it were not for the defense of these rights by our armed forces. It is a disservice to those who serve to show disrespect to these veterans. The monuments honoring them or the flag which represents us. For our veterans, there's a new call to action. Not the clarion call of war, but rather another call to service. It is clearly defined in the preamble of the American Legion in which we pledge to safeguard and transmit to posterity the principles of justice, freedom, and democracy. Unfortunately, today many have lost sight of these principles. We as veterans have both the right and the obligation to promote the ideals previously expressed. It is vital to our national survival that we remain committed to these ideals. We do not do this by exacerbating the division between us, but in the forum of our public and private discourse. It is in the continuation of, of honoring our American traditions such as we are doing today. The principle of justice ensures that all citizens are treated fairly and every voice is heard. The Holy Bible tells us in Micah 6, 8, act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. True justice within a society can never be achieved by violent or in tumult. Those who would seek justice in fiery words and violence only damage their cause and create division. We are called to safeguard and transmit this truth about justice to posterity. It is also vital that we realize in the words of Alexander Solzhenitsyn, noted author and Soviet dissident, that justice is conscience not a personal conscience, but the conscience of the whole of humanity. True justice, therefore, is the province of the conscience and not the external mandate of law. As Cicero said succinctly, summa eos, summa in iuria. The more laws, the less justice. Secondly, the principle of freedom is vital to our national well-being. In a world of cancel culture and political correctness, it is imperative that we uphold the freedom of speech and expression guaranteed to us in the First Amendment. Divergent ideas should be welcomed, not suppressed by political correctness. Our citizens should not have to fear for their jobs or reputations for simply expressing points of view that may be outside of the mainstream narrative. Voltaire said, I may disagree with what you say, but will defend to the death your right to say it. We are sadly nearing a time where this will be suppressed by this trend toward collectivism in thought and expression. It is our duty to ensure that this freedom is never lost. Lastly, as veterans, we are called to support the principles of democracy. We Americans are blessed to have inherited a federal system of with checks and balances in place that limit the power of any one branch. Our founders wisely knew that power corrupts and established a system that protects us from the autocracy of the classes and the masses as stated by the American Legion preamble. It is these checks and balances that keep majorities from amassing too much power and protects the rights of all. It is important that posterity know this truth. For unbridled, the voice of the majority would silent all dissent and mob rule would ensue. It is this federal system that has kept us thus far from descending into the chaos of most democracies. One must only look at the chaos of the French Revolution to see what happens without these checks. As veterans, we need to ensure this principle is understood. America has truly been a blessed land. Soon, we celebrate my favorite personal holiday, Thanksgiving. As an American and as a veteran, I know that I have much to give thanks for. The freedom and posterity I enjoy has been made possible by the blessings of divine providence and the greatness of our people. Those we honor today stand at the pinnacle of American greatness. Our veterans faced all challenges, fought every foe, and proudly stood for us all. Our thanks and honor go out to them. Let us remember... 
It is the veteran, not the preacher, who sustains freedom of religion. It is the veteran, not the reporter, who sustains freedom of press. It is the veteran, not the poet, who sustains the freedom of speech. It is the veteran, not the campus organizer, who sustains the freedom to assemble. It is the veteran, not the lawyer, who sustains the right to a fair trial. And it is the veteran, not the politician, who sustain the right to vote. Please, in this most special of days, join me in a moment of silent prayer for our land and for our veterans. Uncover. Cover. Thank you very much for coming, and God bless America. I guess that's all. I'd like to have Kathy Locke come up for a second. You can both come up. <laughs> I'd like for them to explain a little bit about what they are doing. Good morning. Happy Veterans Day. Um, my name is Kathy Locke, and this is Chris Bisson, and we're from Marshwood Middle School. And traditionally, for the past 20 years since 9-11, we've had a um, Veterans Day Assembly, a school-wide Veterans Day Assembly that honors our first responders and our veterans. And this year, um, we, because of COVID, we have um, done an assembly. We still pulled through and we have a virtual assembly that's posted on Seacoast Online. If you want to hit that, it was posted yesterday. Is that right, Chris? And I'm going to have Chris talk about that. All of our, our one assembly for our entire school building every year features every student and every faculty member. And we take great pride in also um, honoring our first responders, our veterans, and inviting them to come in person. So for those of you who are able to visit the website, whether it's listed as the middle school or through Seacoast Online, to have an opportunity. The video is about 24 minutes long and features all of our students and staff as well as some film and um, photos from previous celebrations over the 20 years. Um, we thank you for the privilege. We've brought some of our usual treats that we give out um, from retired flags and candies, um, but we'd like to the veterans to please remember you are always in our minds and our thoughts and in our hearts. Thank you. Yeah, hey, I want to thank everyone today and sharing this time with us all. Um, just a little reminder that the VFW Post 5744 in South Berwick is having their uh, Veterans Day celebration at uh, 2 o'clock. I almost said 1400. I'm so used to it. <laughs> 2 o'clock this afternoon down at the town hall in South Berwick. Thank you, and that concludes our ceremony for today. My name is Dennis Follett. I'm the Post 79 American Legion Commander here in Berwick. And we planted this tree in honor of Brenda Levine, who has been taking care of our flowers, watering them, because we didn't have water or anything. She had to haul the water, and she planted all the flowers and anything that 
dies, she always replaced everything. She, I think she did it for like 10 years or so. Uh, wonderful lady. And in honor of her dedication, we planted this tree. It's a flowering crab apple or some kind of crab apple tree. Um, and we'll be dedicating this in the spring when it blossoms. Okay, also, in the process of having lighting put in for the new monument, we also had water put in by local um, contractors that gave us one heck of a good deal. Um, almost did it for free. The materials were almost donated completely. So now we have running water, Um, the lights, we had lights put in so that it would be illuminating the new monument that, we, that was dedicated to today. Um, the water was also partially donated. Uh, part of it was by the town and by a local contractor. And I can't remember who it was. But one of the pe people that I, two of the people that I'd like to mention um, that were responsible for getting all this done is our uh, finance officer, Paul Haberzettel, and uh, Andy Buckman. They worked hard with the boys with the, on the monument and getting all this installed. So when, this, when we dedicate this in the spring, when it blossoms, it'll be, it'll be a nice occasion. We'll publicize that ahead of time. That's all I got.